It's time now for Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter, coming to you from the International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. International Christian Fellowship is a Bible-believing church that preaches the uncompromised Word of God and prays for you and your needs. Pastor Peter is bringing the message of salvation, healing, and deliverance throughout the world. Now, here is Pastor Peter. Hello, praise the Lord, and welcome to Jesus is the Answer. This is Pastor Peter. I'm going to pray for you and your needs. And I believe that our God is going to supply all our needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you see the number on your screen, please call and someone would pray for you and your needs. God is doing signs and wonders and miracles. Many people are getting saved, healed, delivered and set free. So please call and you will see what God can do for you. End of this program, I'll be praying for you. So please call and tell somebody to listen to this program. Okay, uh, as you know, we are studying the healings ministry of St. Peter. Before that, we studied the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. And last program we did the healing ministry of St. Peter. As soon as they received the Holy Spirit and many people got saved and the first miracle they did that is recorded in book of Acts chapter 3 and we heard that the man was lame from the mother's womb and Peter and John they were going to the temple and this man was sitting at this gate called beautiful and how God gave Peter and John grace to say to this man, look at us. And he started looking at them, thinking that he is going to get something from them. Peter says, look at us, silver and gold I have none. But what we have, we give it to you. And then he prayed for, he said, in the name of Jesus, Christ, rise up and walk. And he did. So we are not repeating that subject again, but just I wanted to tell you, once that man got healed, and he went to the temple, start praising God, and this news went around. Maybe whole city of Jerusalem came to know these things, that Peter and John are doing the same miracle what Jesus did. So, so many things start happening. People who were believers, they got so excited. Now we can do the same thing what Jesus Christ was doing. And so, so many people start selling the land, the houses and their properties and start bringing money to the Peter and other apostles. And so they were having everything common, food and shelter and everything. And there was a, another man called Barnabas. He was from the tribe of Levi. He also sold this property and gave the money to apostles. So this man was a very noticeable, very good man. Uh, he had a very good character, helping nature and things like that. And he was a well-known man. So when he did it, there was another couple called Ananias and Sapphira. They start saying, let's, we do the same thing. But they did something wrong and crooked thing. They sold the property, kept the half of the portion of the money of the property, and the man goes first to the Peter and said, this is what we got the money from the property. And they were thinking that we will fool the Peter and other apostles because they thought, if we sold the property for 100,000, let's keep the 50,000 for the rainy days. Because we will be giving everything and then we won't have any pocket money. Whatever they were thinking, they gave the property, they gave the half of the money to Peter. Peter says, are you lying to the Holy Spirit? Did you sell it for this amount? And he had the chance to repent or correct. He didn't correct it. And he died. 
And then three hours later, his wife comes. And Peter says, is this the amount you sold the property? Now she had the chance to repent and say, I'm sorry, my husband had this idea, but uh, I think, <coughs> excuse me, I think I want to tell you the truth. This property was not sold for that amount. And she could have said, she could have told the truth. But what happened? She also lied. And then he said, both of you decided to lie to God and the Spirit of Christ. So what happened? He said, the people who buried your husband, their feet is right at the door. And she also dropped dead. Now why I'm saying this? When this thing happened in the church, all people got the fear of God. If you lie, you die. And many people are thinking lying is nothing. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 says, all liars will go to the lake of fire. So lying is not an easy thing. So God was purifying and sanctifying the church. And the people came to know the Spirit of God is moving. Hundreds and thousands of people start joining the church and church start growing. And then we read in the Acts chapter 5, uh, you have to read from the 12 to 16. Here we see the people saw Many signs and wonders are happening by Peter. And they thought he cannot pray for individually every person in the city. This happened in Jerusalem. So they got an idea. They said, you know what? We will bring the people and line up. All the people, different kinds of sick people, like a sick on lying on the bed, so they start bringing their bed and putting on the street. And some people were crippled, some people were different kinds of disease. Even though some people were have demon possessed. All those people line up. And what they were thinking, if the shadow of Peter falls on these people, these people will be healed. And so that's the kind of faith these people got. And now, if you know, the shadow, if you see in a noonday, shadow will be right at your feet. So they have to bring the people early in the morning or early in the evening. So when the sun comes, your shadow will be a little longer. And so they found out how much the shadow reaches that many places people were lying and they said Peter please just take a walk and he might be walking in the morning one side to another side and when you're coming this side maybe on the evening or whatever and then the shadow was falling this way and that way and the both side of the street people start getting healed delivered and set free and the word of God says, if you read uh, verse 16, it says every one of them got healed. Not a single person went disappointed. That means all the people they brought on the streets and Peter walking on the street, maybe showing hand or touching some of them, it doesn't say here, but just shadow of the Peter start healing people and there was a great revival going on and thousands and thousands and thousands of people got saved, healed, delivered and set free. When I read this, not a single person went home without healing. Each and every person was healed. Same thing happened in Jesus' ministry. 
everyone came and everyone got healed. And if you remember, Jesus said in book of St. John chapter 14 verse 12, He says, I'm going to go to my Father, but whatever the miracle I did, you will do also, and you will do greater miracle than what I have done. So, people might be thinking, is it true? Can we do greater miracle than Jesus? This is the example. This is the great example that Peter's shadow start healing people. Jesus' shadow did not heal anyone. Maybe Jesus kept it for the, his believers and followers. He said it. You will do greater miracles. And so the word of God says what Jesus said is true. Because he says, I am the truth. When he says the truth, we should believe it. There are some people today, they are saying, Jesus did miracle and he died and he went to heaven. He rose again and he went to heaven. Apostles did the miracles and they died and they went to heaven. Now the miracle cannot happen. Why is that? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, he said, go to all the world. Preach them in the name of the, no, preach them, give them the message. Make them my disciples. Make them the follower of Christ. And baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I will be with you up to the end of the age. Or until the end of the age. That means, he says, I will be with you. And he says, all power is given unto me. And I am giving that power to you. So, some people say, oh, but that's gone. If Jesus Christ is dead and gone, what the word of God says? He is risen. And Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, Jesus says, I was dead, but now I am alive forevermore. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. If you are a Christian and if you are a believer, can you believe these verses? Jesus is alive and Jesus' promises are true and what the Peter and John did, we can do it also. So we see God's power is available. Why I am doing this program as I told you from the beginning? My desire is to each and every pastor each and every believer, believe the gospel, believe the truth, and start doing the same thing what the Jesus disciples did. First of all, one miracle happened. The lame man was sitting there for many, many years. He was born lame. And when that man got healed, people were excited. And that's the way faith comes. The word of God says faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. All this news went around in Jerusalem. And people start thinking, well, let's tell, take, this chill, take these people to uh, Peter and see what happens. And many people start bringing so there might be no room. So they got the idea, let's put it on the street. And let the Peter walk. And exactly happened. Peter was ordinary man. As we learn, he was a fisherman. He was not a great preacher. But he believed what Jesus said. In the beginning, what Jesus said to him, You follow me, and I will make you the fishers of men. And he was with Jesus and going and telling and doing the signs and wonders and miracles in Jesus' name. Then after the resurrection, Peter still got a little bit confused. So he went for fishing again because 
He didn't know what to do. Jesus comes again and says to him, Peter, first of all he said to people, do you have anything for me to eat? And they say, we don't have anything, we didn't catch any fish. Then Jesus said to them, put it on the right side. And they did. And they got 153 fishes. And so they knew this has to be Jesus. It happened before and Peter gave up the fishing business and this is the second time. But that's not my subject so I'm going to tell you in short. Jesus said to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than this? And the people start thinking, is he talking about all other disciples? No. He would not put bitterness in anyone's heart. He was telling, do you believe or do you love me more than this fishing business? One day you used to do fishing business and I called you and told you to be a fisher of man, be an evangelist. But he asked this question for three times. And finally Peter says, yes Lord, you know that I love you. Then Jesus said, okay, then what you do? You feed my lamb and feed, feed the, uh, first said, feed the sheep, feed the lamb and feed the sheep. And so some people say, why he said three times? So now he is giving a greater <coughs> responsibility to Peter. He says, before you were evangelist, but now you are going to be pastor. You are going to be shepherd. You are going to take care of the sheep. And then you are going to take care of the lamb, babies, in the Sunday school. Then you are going to take care of the sheep again. Those are the elderly people. So the church has the responsibility. Take care of adults, take care of the children, and take care of the senior citizens. And that's the way they start doing it. So the point I'm making, Peter learned great responsibility. Even though he once backslidden, denied Jesus Christ three times, but he was given chance to repent. He repented. He gave his heart to Jesus Christ. He cried like a baby. And then after the receiving the Holy Spirit, Peter was never be the same. People look at Peter and other disciples and they start saying, Wow! See these people. They were unlearned and ordinary people. Fishermen. They never preached. They didn't, they didn't do a science and wonders and miracles before. But now these people are doing this. How they got this power? How they got this wisdom? And someone says, I know. Because they were with Jesus Christ. If you give your old habit, an old life, sinful life, and just call upon Jesus and say, Jesus, I want to be like you. I want to give up my sin. It's no fun anymore. The sin is making me sick. Sin is making me depressed. Sin's enjoyment is for a while. All my friends and all the filthy thing I'm doing, I'm going down the drain. My life is miserable. And some of the people say we are born in a Christian family. Born in the Christian family, you are not born again. Just like Muslim people say, if you're born in a Muslim family, you're a Muslim. If you're born in a Hindu family, you're Hindu. If you're born in a Buddhist family, you're Buddhist. If you're born in a Jewish family, you're Jewish. But if you're born in a Christian family, you're not a Christian. Why? Because Book of Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, if you do not have the Spirit of Christ, you are none of His. You cannot call yourself Christian. Christians means followers of Christ. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Go and tell them about me. Teach them about me. And make them the followers of Christ. And when you follow Christ, you are a Christian. But well, you cannot just follow Christ without you giving your heart to Jesus Christ. I was a nominal Christian. My father was a minister. That did not make me pastor or minister or a child of God. I thought so. I thought I'm a pastor's son. I'm a minister's son. I'm the evangelist's son. So I have to be Christian. But I was not. And if you want to listen to my story, go to YouTube and you will see everything about my life. But the point I'm making, the day I received Jesus Christ and asked forgiveness of my sins, my life transformed, completely transformed. And so I believe Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe Jesus Christ as my healer and deliverer. I believe Jesus Christ is all sufficient God and he will provide all my needs. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, My God will supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Did He say might? No. He will supply all your needs. Not one, all. Whatever your needs are, God knows, but you have to tell God. Tell God that I have these needs. The word of God says you have to open your mouth. You have to ask. When you ask God, He will give it to you. God knows everything. But you have to give your heart to God. You have to ask God to forgiveness for your sins. There are some people are saying today, you don't have to confess your sins. You don't have to ask God to forgive your sins. And somebody will say, what happened to Ananas and Sapphira? They died because they commit sin. He said, oh, no, 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 they were not Christian. This is all false teaching coming to the believers. We have to study the word of God. And we have to see, Lord, I want to live a clean and holy life. This Ananas and Sapphira kept the 50% of money for themselves for the rainy days. What happened? Someone says, when it rains, it pours. So, they died. What happened to the rest of the money? It's gone. But once you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He supplies your need. From the day I followed Christ until today, I didn't have any lack. I didn't have any uh, needs. I say like David said, Lord is my shepherd. And I shall not want. I'm not lacking anything. Now somebody say you might be lacking so many things. But I don't feel it. I don't need those things. Whatever the needs I have. He's supplying my daily needs. I do not worry for tomorrow. Read the Matthew chapter 6. And verse 25 to 32. I'm sorry 36. If you read there. If he says in the last uh, 36, there are 34 verses, but 36 he said, Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things will be added unto you. But if you read from 25, he says, Why are you worry about food and shelter and all of these things? So everything is mentioned there. So what we need? Jesus. Jesus will supply your needs. Are you suffering with the sickness and disease? And you tried everything and nothing working. Let me tell you, Jesus is the answer for our problems. We have to come to Jesus Christ. And we have to say, Lord Jesus, I tried everything. I read in the Bible. The Peter's shadow healed the people. Now, I don't see Peter. I don't see John. I don't see Jesus. But your word says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Just look at Jesus Christ by faith and he will come to rescue you. 
I heard so many examples when the people call upon Jesus and Jesus rescued them from the car accidents, from different kinds of ditch and different kinds of fire. And they themselves say, we don't know what happened. Maybe angel pulled me out. Other day I had the experience, I fell from my uh, roof, means my attic, and I fell and went down and I, I had no idea how I'm coming up. But I just call upon Jesus, say, Jesus, I cannot get up. Rescue me, help me. And instantly I stood up and started going up and down and like nothing happened. But when I saw, I had so many bruises and scar and pain. But by the grace of God, I'm healed. The point I'm making, I did not take a drop of medicine. I did not run to the doctor. I did not call anybody, even my wife or anybody. After that, they came to know. But I believe Jesus saved my life and he healed me. He rescued me. I'm going to pray for you. Just give your heart to Jesus Christ. Say, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Please forgive all my sins and wash me with your precious blood. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you pray this prayer, that means Jesus is in, the problem is out, and you are belong to God. You are a child of God. You are a new creation. Now, if you want to pray for yourself or pray for your loved ones, just do it together. Pray for them. Let's pray. Touch somebody. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the listeners. Touch them. Heal them. Deliver them. And set them free. And let them know Jesus is the answer. Amen and amen. God heard prayer. In the name of Jesus, you are healed. Now, may God richly bless you and use you more and more for His glory. Amen and amen. You've been listening to Jesus is the Answer with Pastor Peter of International Christian Fellowship in Northeast Philadelphia. If this program has been a blessing to you, please let Pastor Peter know. Write to Pastor Peter at Post Office Box 5033, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19111. Again, that's Pastor Peter, Box 5033, Philadelphia, PA, 19111. Pastor Peter and his prayer partners are taking your calls right now. The number is 215-342-3759. Again, that's 215-342-3759. You can also send email to icfprayerline at comcast.net. Every Sunday at 11 a.m., International Christian Fellowship has a worship service with communion and healing service. You can find more information at www.internationalchristianfellowship.org. This is a faith ministry. Your prayers and financial support are greatly appreciated. And please remember to tune in next time for Jesus is the Answer.